After completing the absolute masterpiece that is the Owl House, I couldn't wait to see what other Disney originals had to offer. I was torn between the Ghost of Molly McGee and Amphibia. I thought Molly McGee looked more visually appealing, so I gave that a shot. And man, did I love it. It was so nice to see Disney continue with such great expression and relatability. The series is about how Molly and her family moved to a town called Brighton. She ended up befriending a ghost named Scratch, and they spend their days going on various adventures that may or may not involve some ghostly antics. I'm a really childish guy, and this show is perfect for me. The humor is quick and outgoing, and there are many moments where they take a jab at some relatable stuff. Molly's eccentric energy instantly pulled me in, and the show's light and fun attitude kept me around. After I got done watching the first episode, the first thing I said was, the ghost in Molly McGee gets it. The series very quickly became my comfort show. I watched it every morning on my weekends. It felt so good to relax after a work week and drown myself in the uplifting and catchy theme song. This show is one of the best examples of goofy nonsense while having enough story to take it seriously. And the finale damn near left me in tears. There wasn't a single episode that I hated, but the episode I want to talk about today is one that I I loved. The first segment of Season 2 Episode 8, The Unhaunting of Brighton Video. This one hits me way too close to home. My little old school heart could not handle the callbacks to the good old days of cinema, as well as sharing a pretty damn good message. So Molly's dad is put in charge of turning Brighton's old video store into a community center, only to find out that that shit is haunted. <laughs> So Molly assembles her team of friendly ghost hunters to sort it out. The newest member of this team being Ollie, Molly's new neighbor and friend eventually turned boyfriend. He's an incredibly nice guy, however he's also part of a family of hardcore ghost hunters who sought to destroy them all. But it's because of Molly and Scratch that he realized that not all ghosts are terrible and some of them are actually pretty chill. While he did join Molly's team, Scratch understandably isn't really all that fond of the guy. They're also joined by their friend Libby. I was so shocked to find out that she's voiced by Lara Jill Miller, who is the English voice of Haru in Beastars. Could this ghost's unfinished business be horror movie? related? I'll make him happy, you just watch. Anyway, we get to a quick music number, which is unfortunately one of the few cons that I have about the show. Yeah, expect at least one song per episode that has a really good tune, but lyrics that are a tad too creative. Got a powerful rope, this only weakness is pretty much any kind of fool. They determined that the type of ghost they're dealing with is a Howling Harriet, which means it's a spirit that can't pass on to the afterlife because it has unfinished business from the real world. TVs are so square. Hold it like this. Swipe here, and... Nope, I don't get it. As someone who grew up with video cassettes, this is a joy to watch. I actually still have all my old cassette tapes and nabbed a VCR a couple years back. I don't use it, but I'm happy I have it. Definitely gonna shove it in my kid's face to show them how rough it used to be. So they encounter the ghost of the shop named Blair, who claims that she only stays there because she wants to. Watching old school movies, chilling in a beanbag with movie snacks. Holy shit, this chick is living. Ollie tries to engage with Blair. That didn't work. Scratch uses his powers as the literal head of the ghost council to force her out. And that didn't work. Scratch decides not to push it and tries to call it quits. However, However, Molly and Libby are adamant on trying to solve Blair's issues. With anxiety on his face, Ollie chooses to side with Blair and defends her, leading the other three to get kicked out while Ollie gets a front row seat to movie night. After this, we get two equally important revelations, that the reason Ollie was so quick to side with Blair is because he's hiding from his own unfinished business, as well as how Blair has many times brought up her favorite movie Blood Mansion, but hasn't actually been watching it. And when she's approached about this, she's rather dismissive of it. Molly and team break back into the shop and confront Ollie about his feelings. In a fit of tears, he reveals the deep regret that he's been facing in life, being that everything he was taught to believe was wrong and that he almost hurt one of Molly's closest friends. Because of his past, he doesn't believe he deserves to be a part of the team, but Molly reassures him that while that may be his past, his current actions show that he has room to improve for the future. This moment causes Blair to break and empty out her own- Ah, uh, excuse me. This scene causes Blair to break and empty out her own feelings. It was the summer of 98. Hey! That's when I was born. Turns out when she was alive, Blair rented her favorite movie, Blood Mansion, and refused to bring it back because she couldn't stop watching it. Which movie was that for you guys? For me, it was the first Dead Space movie. I watched it three times a week for like three f months. And when she did go to return it, she got scared, ran off, and... Died. I'm not sure how, and I'm not sure if the lightning was an implication or just setting the mood. And because of that, her unfinished business is that because she didn't return the movie, she can't watch it. Ollie decides to comfort Blair, and the rest of the team decide to play as staff so she can return the tape properly. <laughs> Computer, I'll start it. You have a late fee of... $2. Uh, Molly, we just saw that that computer isn't working, and you just swindled a couple bucks out of a lost soul. Well, I mean, technically Libby, but the morality still stands. So she returns the tape and pieces out. The episode ends with Ollie apologizing for his actions, which they acknowledge helped them complete their goal. So it all worked out in the end. There's really nothing all that heavy about this episode. I just really love it. Anything that pushes old school references is an instant win in my book. Those themes combined with the message that they choose to approach is right up my alley. If you haven't watched this show, then you have to give it a try. You will not regret it. And that's going to be it for today. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.